This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Financial Beat, ladies and gentlemen. Logan Sadler is here and fully prepared to deliver a great radio show today. I'm Ron Stutz, and we're going to talk about getting you to and through retirement. Logan Sadler, of course, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Bregari Financial, wherever you are in Southern California today. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us. Uh, Logan, how you doing, my friend? Well, like you said, Ron, I'm here and uh, as prepared as I'm going to get to give you guys a good show this week. Yeah, it's been kind of a busy week. A lot of things happening in the news and mm-hmm. sports. And I don't know about you, but I've been watching a lot of basketball lately. And so yeah. <laughs> we might talk about that a little bit today. But We might have to. <laughs> we have some uh, other serious stuff that uh, we need to discuss. Uh, first of all, let me give everybody your phone number so they can get in touch and get one of the discovery meetings that we talk about so often. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-7526. But the easy way to remember that is by using the word plan, 888-823-PLAN. Hey, got a, a, first of all, I know you've watched a lot of basketball because you're a former player and you know, you're a big fan just like I am. But uh, yep. man, there was some exciting stuff on television recently, that's for sure. Yeah, it was, right? I mean, March Madness is always the fun thing to, to watch, and especially out know, here in California, seeing seeing the local school get in there was always nice, but unfortunately yeah. came up came up a little short. But hey, it's always uh, it's always makes for some fun, and I think that's, in my opinion, one of the best things about March is whether you like whether you like basketball or not, I think it's just still just a fun time of the year because there's a lot going on. It's a new year, and you got who doesn't love a little sports here and there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, kudos to UConn. Boy, they were really yeah. tough. And uh, it's just one of those nights where San Diego State just couldn't hit anything, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we were talking uh, before the show. It's, it is uh, not always ideal when that happens, but sometimes you just can't, can't make a shot, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, well, uh, I got something that I think is pretty amazing. I don't, I don't know if you can believe everything that you read, but I read something earlier this week uh, that dogs sneeze to tell other dogs that they're friendly so when they're playing it doesn't turn into a fight (laughs) i don't know if i believe that or not (laughs) you know what's funny is it i mean i guess it can make sense right i just that's one of those things where i i'm not sure if it's true or not but i mean it's I don't even know how I would tell if that is true or not. <laughs> it's one of those things, but um, hey, that's what I like about this show, Ron, is uh, we hopefully we teach some some people some good things about retirement education, but also I get to learn a little bit because you bring up some of these fun facts of the weeks and things like that. So that's I'm going to have to do a little further research on it, but I, I like the way that's going. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy stuff, I'm telling you. Hey, yeah. let's, let's talk about retirement planning with Robin Williams, one of the funniest people who uh, who've ever been on this planet. I mean, he, he was hilarious. He and, was. And maybe we can learn some things about about retirement planning from some of his quotes, because he always had colorful things to say. He said, the things we fear the most have already happened to us. And if you (laughs) really think about it, that's true. Yeah, it is, right? I mean, uh, it's funny because, yeah, you're right, Robin Williams, though, is one of my favorites of all time. He was was hilarious in pretty much anything he was in, or if it wasn't a funny movie, he was really good at whatever part it was, right? Yep, yep, good dramatic Um, actor, too. (laughs) He was, he was. He'd get a little creepy there on some of those roles, which is what what the job job called for, right? But yeah, yeah, no, I think it's, uh, that's, that's a very good thing, right? We're fearful of things that have already happened. And I think that's in life, I think that's very uh, common. But also, I think it's very true when you look at a lot of the certain things as far as the economy, right? I mean, people look back on recent crisis or traumas or, or volatility, and they look back on what happened and they think very similar things are going to happen again. And they're always fighting the last war, I guess you could say, right, as that saying goes. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's really always about what is the next thing that's going to happen, right? Because it always looks uh, different, but it might be similar in a lot of cases. They might have similar similarities, right? Because each market event or each crisis that happens, it does kind of spark from one thing or another, and it does have a lot of the similarities as the other things, but it might affect the overall economy different, right? I mean, you look at like the 9-11, the early 2000s, we had a lot of volatility going on with all of that stuff going on in the world around that time, but that was completely different than what happened in 2008, right? I mean, that was more of a real estate uh, crisis, and then it turned into a market crisis, then a banking crisis. So, I mean, there's all, they're all a little bit different. I think it's very important 
when you're looking at your financial plan is you're looking at what history has done, but also, you know, what could probably happen next and how can we best insulate ourselves to make sure we're not uh, deeply affected by that or, or not affected at all in some cases. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Another thing that uh, Robin Williams said, and this makes a lot of sense to me because, you know, getting older is better than the alternative as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, <laughs> he once point. said, stop being afraid of getting older. With age comes wisdom and confidence. Yeah, exactly yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. I mean, right? I mean, I think everybody out there, and, and of course, I meet with most of the people that I'm meeting with or that are coming on board with our firm or already clients of ours. They're typically, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old, somewhere in that time frame. Sure. And it's interesting because a lot of them do have that fear, right? Maybe their back hurts a little bit more. Or maybe they have a little less hair. <laughs> maybe it's a little more gray or, or or whatever it is, right? We all have things that as we get older, there they're might not be the most fun or the most exciting in some cases. But I think in general, one of the one of the most interesting things I always talk about, Ron, is I, I talked about one of some of our clients that are in their in their mid nineties. They've been with us for a very very long time, and I asked them, you know, what was their favorite age, and they were saying, you know, that that fifty and sixties was awesome, right? Because really? they were still young enough to do things. They had typically the money and the time to do things by that time frame, and it was kind of all all you know peaceful and graceful from there, right? Of course, they had good health and everything on their side, but. When you look at that time frame, I think 50s and 60s and even 70s in today's world is still very active and very, very young spirited in a lot of ways. And I think it's not something you should be looking against, but something we should more embrace, right? Because I think it's something like you were saying, Ron, it's better than what's the alternative, right? Of not getting older, it would be not living very much longer. So I think it's important to embrace that. But it's also important to look in your financial plan and, and embrace what age uh, means to your retirement plan and also you know, looking forward to that next phase on the next horizon. That whole conversation kind of brings to mind uh, for me the old thing of, boy, I wish I had known then what I know now. You know, that's, yeah, that's a powerful thing. saying, right? <laughs> yeah. Looking back, you know, I wish I was as smart as, as I am now, or I think I am anyway, or confident or, or whatever the case may be. So, and I think it's a great way. Pretty common with everybody. Another thing that uh, he said, it's kind of an inspirational quote here. There's a world out there. Open a window and it's there. <laughs> yeah, he probably had something pretty more uh, more inspirational in mind there than what I'm probably going to say. But yeah, I think when you look at people with their investments, right, and their investment choices, for some people approaching retirement, uh, some people have already retired and they have maybe they have their funds in a 401k or an old IRA. And they really don't have much variety to it. Um, they really just have kind of done their job and done it well. And all of a sudden they're done and they have a 401k menu that they are allowed to pick from a few different asset classes, right? I mean, some of them might have a few different asset classes in their 401k and they haven't really looked out the window, so to speak. And, you know, I always say there's so many asset classes when you're just in a 401k. And this is not me knocking a 401k because they are really, really good places to put money while you're working, while you're contributing. But typically over age 59 and a half, or once you're no longer employed by that employer, you can do what's called an IRA rollover to an IRA, whether you work with an advisor like us or, or you do it yourself. You have access to, I always say a whole new world, but since we're talking about looking out the window, we'll say a whole new window of opportunities. But you know, there's things out there, Ron, like we talk about on this show all the time. Fixed index annuities can be good alternatives for some clients that want safety guarantees and maybe some income. There's fixed annuities that are kind of like a CD, but typically a little bit more competitive. You have real estate, private uh, equity REITs, and uh, different and traditional private equity as well. You have universal life insurance, structured notes, growth notes, CDs, you know, options. I mean, there's so many different investment types out there. And a lot of the times in an investment plan for retirement, you might want to incorporate some of that stuff into your plan to help transition you into that next phase of, of you know retirement or maybe getting ready to start gearing up more for that focus of the, uh, we call it the decumulation phase, where you're going to start taking income and getting things set up to transition to that next phase of life. One of the really funniest people uh, ever, Robin Williams, had some things to say that we can apply to financial planning, and that's what we're talking about here today. And uh, you're listening to The Financial Beat, and I'll tell you in just a moment uh, here how you can get in touch with Logan Sadler and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. But but one more Robin quote here. He said, you will have bad times, but they will always wake you up to the stuff you weren't paying attention to. Can you make <laughs> any sense out of that one? I think so. Um, 
I think that you know that applies to uh, if we have a downturn in the stock market, let's say, and people are always awakened to things that they weren't really paying attention to before, right? Yeah. And I think specifically how much risk they're carrying in their investments. We talk about risk a lot in the show. And the one thing I always say is you can, you know, you can stress test your portfolio anytime to find out how much risk you're exposed to. But of course, most people don't actually do that, right? Or they don't, if they do have that done, they're not really, well, that won't happen. Or, or it, I don't think the market will go down that fast. Or I don't think the market's going to go down this year. Or they throw out, you know, I don't want to say excuses, but we throw out different, you know, different things to ease our mind, I'll say. And uh, one thing we do for all of our all of our clients that come on board with our firm is we do a risk assessment of where they're currently structured. And we want to show you, you know, based off what your risk comfortability is, and here's where you're at. But here's where we might be able to shift things around to get things more in line with your comfort level. Because the problem is risk is not the problem. I always tell people risk is not a bad thing. The problem is many people are not aware of the risk they're taking, right? I think some of us are okay with risk. Some of us are not, just depending on what situation and what our comfort level is. But more often than not, I find, uh, Ron, when we do those reviews with clients and we'll do the risk assessment, a lot of the times the clients that don't like much risk have the most risk, right? And they're not aware of it. And so I think it's super important to kind of hammer in and identify where your comfort level is with risk to make sure that you're uh, set up properly. You know, I think things like bonds and stuff like that in 2022, they weren't really aware of how how fast things can be volatile until all of a sudden, you know, you look and go, man, my bonds went down maybe as much as my stock side of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, understanding your options and understanding your risk is important. And I think it's super important if you're one of those people out there that's approaching retirement or maybe uh, just getting ready to start retirement. I think it's important to where if you're looking for strategies or, or a retirement plan or someone to help guide you through your retirement and help identify, you know, what risk and what type of asset classes you have in your portfolio and really helping identify what your bottom line goal is to transition to retirement and maybe give you that more peace of mind type of retirement that you might have been looking for. Definitely think it's time you give us a call and come in for our discovery meeting or we could do it over Zoom or over the phone and we can kind of take a deep dive and just see what it is you're trying to accomplish, what your overall goals are and see if our firm is the right firm to help transition you into retirement or if you're in retirement give you a little bit more peace of mind, like I was saying, and maybe guide you a little bit a little bit better along. So that's what our discovery meeting process is for. You can give the, uh, give the call or give a call to the number Ron's going to give you here in a second. And you can come in, meet with myself here at one of our offices or via Zoom. We could take a deep dive into your situation and see how we can bring some value. A free discovery meeting with no obligation attached to 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. That's your number to call for Regary Financial. Uh, all you have to do today is leave a message with your name and phone number. Number, you'll get a call back from the good folks at Regary at the beginning of the week and set a time to have that conversation with Logan Sadler. As he mentioned, it can be on the phone or it could be via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into one of the offices, either Hemet or Redlands. It's up to you, but there's no charge for this. It's simply something that uh, Logan Sadler offers all of our listeners on the show here today. But uh, you got to call, you got to reach out with that phone number, 888 823 PLAN. That number can make it happen for you, and you'll be glad you did. I'm Ron Stutz, along with Logan Sadler. You're listening to The Financial Beat, and there's more on the other side of this timeout. We all know Congress has approved trillions of dollars in spending the past year. It's all on top of the tens of trillions of dollars of debt our nation already owes. Yet we're living with some of the lowest tax rates in history. Now, how long do you think that's going to last? Learn how you can prepare for future tax implications by watching Logan Sandler of Regary Financial's exclusive webinar, How Tax Planning Changes Through the Four Stages of Retirement. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000, and we'll text you back a link to the webinar right away. Text ADVICE to 21000 and make sure you don't have to pay a cent more in taxes than you have to. To access the free webinar right now, Text advice to 21,000. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show because we have some important information coming up. 
We're back now with more of the Financial Beat. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Not only is Logan on the radio, but you can find him on YouTube in a variety of videos, and you can catch a podcast if you miss part of this show or or all of a show. You can go catch it there. Uh, Logan, how do folks access all that good information? Yeah, I know a lot of you guys have been following along and heading over to the podcast platforms to uh, listen to more shows, so we appreciate the support. Uh, you could head over to podcasts, whether that's Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, or wherever it is you download podcasts. You can go over there, type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, and there's over 100 episodes now recorded and put up there for you to check out at your convenience, as well as we have the YouTube channel. So you can head over to YouTube, wherever it is you download or watch YouTube, and uh, type in The Financial Beat. And again, we have different videos we upload there weekly as well for you to check out on different retirement educational topics that, again, a lot of them are questions that people have been writing into the show or people I've been meeting with that are typically in a similar situation to you to give you some extra input and some extra advice to just kind of follow along that might pertain to your situation. If not, at least give you a little bit more understanding of certain topics. So head over to YouTube and uh, follow along and click subscribe. Yeah, and after you watch some of those videos, you can certainly call this number, 888-823-PLAN, and follow up with questions you might have. Or uh, you can arrange a, a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. Got a quote of the week here for you, Logan. I know you will uh, like this one and, and probably agree with it to a great extent. Peter Lynch once said, know what you own and know why you own it. And when it comes to financial <laughs> matters, that is so important. That is very good. Like you said, you can pertain that to life. You can pertain that to investments. You can pertain that to a lot of things. And I think that is one of the things I always preach in our retirement plans. You know, if you're holding things like stocks, you got to understand why you're holding stocks. If you're holding ETFs, you got to understand why if annuities, insurance products, whatever it is, you want to understand what you own and why you own it. I think that's a great quote there. I'm going to write down and keep that in my book here, Ron. <laughs> well, I think that's one of the things that you cover, you know, when you have a discovery meeting with someone, yep. uh, when you take a deep dive analysis that we always talk about, you look yeah. at what they have and, 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 you know, people should know why they own that particular thing. And some folks aren't even aware of what they have. Yeah, it's funny you say that because literally in a discovery meeting I had yesterday, um, I was talking with a client and they had some variable annuities. And, uh, you know, and again, not saying those are bad. I was just wondering, you know, why he had those in the portfolio. It was a client who was very high net worth and it was interesting. He couldn't really answer why he didn't really know he had those as well as yeah. he uh, didn't understand why he had those. So I think <laughs> it's important to, like you said, understand what you have and why you have it. Yeah. And things change over time, too. So, you know, it's important to make those regular assessments of, uh, you know, what you're doing and, uh, and how you're preparing for retirement, whatever. But, Absolutely. Uh, you know, some people get lost, getting lost while driving in the car or maybe taking a hike in the woods is kind of getting uh, kind of like getting lost in retirement planning. Uh, so let's look at why people get lost and how to get back on track. Like that guy was that you just talked about was lost to a certain degree because he mm -hmm. wasn't even aware that he had these things and certainly didn't know why. But uh, some of the reasons that people get lost, you could sum up with saying that they have bad tools. Maybe that particular thing was a bad tool for this individual. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, you could, you could relate that to a lot of different things as far as bad tools. But um, I think in retirement planning, you're right, Ron. I mean, I think you look at the outline. Uh, sometimes I think of some of these clients that have online calculators or uh, they lead to sometimes uh, a straight or confusing income projections on what your 401k statement might give you. And it might be false, right? I think a lot of those give you some uh, false impressions of what your actual retirement income could look like. I had one client where, you know, it was like saying, let's just say $4,000 a month is what his income would be in retirement, just as an example. And and it was funny because, you know, he was like, yeah, but you include that plus Social Security, some other things. I'm going to be okay, right? And I looked down the statement and it was like, well, sir, actually, this is factoring in your Social Security, right? This is Ooh. showing a projection Boy. of your Social Security in there. So it's always interesting when you look at a lot of those reports. I think they could be good to give you some sort of an idea. But I definitely don't think it is real comprehensive planning because there's a lot more factors and, and, and other things you want to look into to make sure you're crystal clear on where your income's coming from, you know, what type of sources of income are you gonna have, what's the taxes on those. A lot of those questions are not answered. And I think a lot of that needs to be covered as far as what your what your tools are gonna to be using to create that plan. Yeah, and, and getting lost while driving in the car is a lot like uh, planning for retirement in, in some ways because mm -hmm. 
you know, you may have been given bad directions. You may have been told to <laughs> turn left here or go five miles and look for the look for the tree and then on yep. the other side. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you may have gotten some bad directions along the way, and the same thing applies in, in, uh, in financial matters. Yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, I think we've seen a lot of people get bad directions on, on, on uh, road trips or in retirement planning, right? And I think uh, in retirement planning, it could be maybe an advisor or a broker or someone sold you a product that was maybe more in their interest, best interest, not your best interest. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, it could also be in some areas, Ron, people who have taken advice from friends or family instead of maybe a professional that understands your situation and has helped people through that. And right? I, I always give an example. I have a client who I've heard, I've heard this time and time again, right? And, and not saying this is bad or good or any of that stuff. Just this, just kind of as an example, mm -hmm. when you look at, I have a client who had said, Hey, she, she is a single woman. She's in her early sixties. And she has around five hundred thousand dollars or so saved for retirement. Has some social security. Has still has a mortgage on her home. You know, just giving you a little background. Yeah. And she gets advice from her brother and sister in law that are worth five million dollars, right? <laughs> and and uh, their I always you know would say like their situation you can't compare apples to apples there, right? Their their goals, their concerns, their uh, overall outcome, and their really overall view on what retirement is going to look like is drastically different, right? It's very hard to get advice from people that aren't can't really see your situation, right? And I feel that's one of the things a good advisor should be doing. It's always, yes, I get it. You're going to talk to friends or family about situations, which is fine. But I always say when it comes down to taking actual direction, you got to find the professional that you feel comfortable working with that you feel does have your best interest at heart. Because again, I always say there's a lot of really, really good advisors out there, but there's also some that, that aren't so great. And so I think it's important. And once you find that right professional, to lean into them, allow you to help them, allow allow them to help guide you and uh, point you in the right direction because they probably have helped people in your situation before and have helped people with similar goals and out and dreams and all that stuff. So it's super important on who you're getting the input from. And everybody's situation is different. That's why yes. uh, retirement planning is is on an individual basis, and uh, you know every scenario is different from the last person. Uh, Logan Sadler can be reached at eight 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 two three plan eight 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 two three plan. That's your number to call if you would like to have a discovery meeting. We'll give you that number again coming up in just a few minutes here. We're talking about getting lost, and one of the easy ways to get lost is not really paying attention. You may miss the uh, place you needed to turn, yeah. <laughs> the exit, and then you end up having to go around your elbow to, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm about to say here, but I do <laughs> you end up going way out of your way in order to get where you're going. And the same thing applies to your uh, financial planning, particularly for retirement. If you're not paying attention, there's some things that can really get you off track. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, retirement planning. I've, I've seen some clients where they've never done more than take a quick little glance at their 401k statement, right? Hey, am I up or down this month? Oh, perfect, I'm down. Oh, dang it, okay. Right, they've never really kept track of their spending. They've never kept track of what their investments are in. They've never looked at their savings plan. They have no idea when they're going to retire, right? Might be next year, might be next month, might yeah. be five years. Mm -hmm. And so I think just not paying attention is not always the best thing. In many, in many instances, not just retirement planning, I believe truly that when you're looking at your retirement plan, it is important when you're about five years before retirement, maybe even further out in some cases, it is super important that you're dialed in and uh, understand what investments you have, what your goals are, what your retirement you know approximation is. Are you thinking five years down the road, one year down the road, as well as helping someone kind of paint the picture for you of what you're looking for in retirement. So I think it's super, super important to be alert and have an understanding of, again, like that quote earlier, right? What you have and why you have it, and, and really overall, what what are you? What's your overall goal with why you're working, why you're putting money away, and how is this going to look here in the future? Okay, we've been talking a lot about getting lost. Maybe you have bad tools. Maybe you got bad directions. Maybe you just haven't been paying attention. But Logan, how can you get back on track? Yeah, that's a great thing. I'm, I'm going to kind of break it down, probably run into probably let's say. Uh, two or three segments here, okay? okay. <laughs> um, I think, how do you get back on track? Number one, determining where you are, right? Determine where you're at. I think the biggest thing is in life, you got to figure out what road you're on what town you're going to, right? Where, where are you going to find the next X on the map, right? I think that's super important. In retirement planning as well, you totally, you got to understand how much money you have, how it's invested, what your goals are, and really kind of sizing up what we call your current situation. You can't really identify the next step until you identify where you're at now. 
Then you want to decide, number two, Ron, where do you want to go, right? I mean, in retirement planning, determine what you want retirement to look like. Are you going to work part-time? Are you going to volunteer? Are you going to play golf every day? Are you going to hang out with friends and family? What, what is your ideal t- retirement going to look like? And then determine how much income and expenses and, and retirement income you're going to need to sustain that, right? And I think the third most important thing I would say that's very, in my opinion, one of the most important is get help, right? I think it's important to, in retirement planning, to seek professional guidance. Make sure, again, when you're, if you're one of those people that can't handle all these different things yourself, I think it's super important to lean on a professional to help guide you through that that challenging process for a lot of us is getting on track and getting ready for retirement. And that's really, you know, what our team has helped lots of people do over a very, very long period of time is help guide retirees and pre-retirees into um, into making sure they can help identify where they're currently at, where they want to go, and then also give them the guidance and the tools and the direction to help get there and implement uh, that plan and help implement the plan to, to meet those goals. And I think that's one of the most important things that an advisor can do. And so if you're one of those people out there, maybe you have an advisor or you're not, you know, maybe you just don't feel like you're getting the planning you need. Uh, maybe you're just getting some investment advice and not overall planning. Maybe you've never had an advisor and you're wondering what that relationship would look like or what the value they could bring. I always say it's definitely a good time to give us a call. And uh, again, come in. There's no, no uh, obligation. You're just going to come in, do a discovery meeting. I'm going to ask you some questions about you, try to get to understand your situation, see where your direction is, where you're trying to go, and just kind of help identify if we're the right fit to help get you to where you want to go to that next phase in retirement. So give us a call. I don't pass you off on anybody else. You actually come in to the office and meet with myself, or if it's on Zoom, again, you're meeting with me, and we can really take a deep dive onto some of the topics we cover on the radio and see if some of these questions and concerns and topics have any pertaining to your situation and to see if we could bring some value to you and your family. 888 plan. That is your number to call. It will be a pleasant conversation. There's no salesmanship involved. He's not going to try to push any products off on you. Uh, Nothing like that. It's kind of a getting to know you uh, situation. You get to know him a little bit. He gets to know you. He can answer some questions for you, and then you can decide to move on from there if you'd like. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call for a discovery meeting. As Logan just said, it can be on the phone, it can be via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into one of the convenient Regary Financial offices. It's totally up to you. It's not going to cost you a penny, not going to carry with it any kind of obligation. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Now, what Logan said just a moment ago is very important. He takes a comprehensive approach and taking everything into account when it comes to your financial planning. They have terrific partnerships, Gary, with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists as well to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. That can be you. Again, discovery meeting, no cost, no obligation, 888-823-PLAN. You're listening to The Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler. We have more coming up right after this. Are you concerned about living too long? Do you worry about the cost of health care in the future? These are a few of the signs that permanent life insurance could be for you. Logan Sadler of Regary Financial will help you recognize the rest of the signs. Text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to download this free guide to understanding permanent life insurance. Text ADVICE to 21000. Permanent life insurance isn't for everyone everyone, but it could make a dramatic difference in your financial life. Text ADVICE to 21000 to find out if that's the case. Did you know music is good for the heart? A study at a university in Italy showed that music helps promote a better cardiovascular system. But we also know that a sound financial plan is good for peace of mind. Keep listening to The Financial Beat so we can help you find a plan that both your head and your heart can agree on. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat. The beat goes on, as they say. Logan Sadler is VP, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Regary has been around for a very long time. Logan Sadler works with three different generations of client families, and many of those clients have been with the firm for more than a quarter of a century. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, who not only has this radio show, but a variety of YouTube videos. All you got to do is go to YouTube and search for The Financial Beat, and you'll find all kinds of different uh, uh, pieces of advice there and informational videos that you will find interesting. Also, if you miss uh, part of this show or, uh, you know, all of a show sometime, uh, you can listen.
listen to the podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a discovery meeting, a getting to know you session with Logan Sadler. Uh, there's no obligation attached, no strings attached, in other words, and no charge whatsoever. 888-823-PLAN. Hey, uh, I got a crazy off-the-wall question, and uh, I had a friend ask me, uh, you know, I wonder if Logan Sadler is the kind of guy who sings in the shower because he seems <laughs> he seems pretty happy in a good mood most of the time, and I kind of equate the two of those things. But do you sing in the shower, Logan, for the benefit of my friend? Well, here's the here's the here's my answer. Okay, so uh, do I sing in the shower? I would say no. Have I sung in the shower? The answer would be yes, right? So I I think we're all guilty of uh, of letting a, a few tunes you know belt out in the shower here or there, but it's not something I do religiously or, or, or every day by any means, but I'm sure at some point I've, I've sang, sang some song in the shower, and I can guarantee you, we're not allowed to say guaranteed very much on this show, right, with investments and advice and things like that, right. but I can guarantee you that the uh, sound of the singing was not improved by being in the shower. It was still probably awful, so uh, <laughs> well, that's maybe, some unfortunate news. Maybe I should ask you, do you sing in the shower when your wife is not home? <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny is I'm not an embarrassed type person, so I'd probably do it if she was home or not. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I understand. Hey, let's get to some truth bombs. We're asking you to tell the truth about, you know, singing in the shower or not singing in the shower. But uh, how about some other things? Hopefully your world won't be shaken too violently. If you're listening to the show out there today, you won't be shocked when we drop these truth bombs on you. Uh, first of all, Logan, bonds aren't always as great for retirees as a lot of people think. We've seen evidence of that recently, haven't we? Yeah, we have, right? I mean, I think that's the old rule of thumb, right? A lot of people say, well, as you get older, more and more money should go into bonds or, or, or some type of safer investments, right? And traditionally speaking, uh, most of the time, bonds have been a pretty good spot, historically speaking, to put some of your retirement money or portions of your retirement money. The problem is, like you were saying, Ron, is the truth bomb lately, really the last five, 10 years has been most of the overall bonds have just been so compressed with what rates have been doing. And as volatile as rates have been recently, bonds are continuing to be volatile in a lot of the different sectors of bonds. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't understand, Ron, is um, many people think of bonds as like, hey, there's just bonds, there's one bond, right? And there's, that's not true. There's thousands of different types of bonds, right? I mean, there's government bonds, corporate bonds, short-term bonds, long-term bonds, intermediate bonds. I mean, there's a lot of different versions of what bonds could look like. Then you have bond funds as well, right? So you have individual bonds as well as bond funds like mutual funds or indexes. And the problem is, like you were saying, Ron, is that Historically speaking, those have been a good place to be for a portion of your safe, safer retirement money. But unfortunately, the last five or 10 years or so, most of these major bond indexes have been down, you know, four, five, six, seven, maybe even 10% over a long period of time. Yeah. And especially in years like 2022, when bonds were very volatile in most of the sectors, clients were going, wait a minute, you know, I put money into bonds to be safe. So maybe I put 50% of my portfolio in bonds to be conservative. And those went down 10% or 15% or whatever it was. And uh, my stocks or my equity position also went down maybe 10 or 15%. So what's going on? Why am I putting money in bonds, right? And I think that's a very you know important question to ask because there's a lot of asset classes out there that I think can be important into a retirement portfolio to help diversify risk. And I think the answer right now has not been bonds the last few years, at least with as much of a portion as you used to put in there, right? That used to be the whole thing. And I think it's super important when you're looking at investment and asset classes and retirement planning to understand really what the risk is of each of those types of asset classes and understanding the volatility that could potentially be there. Okay, the next truth bomb I want to put out there is uh, something that uh, a lot of people haven't really thought about. You know, people complain about taxes all the time, but, you know, income tax rates are currently close to historical lows. I mean, we're really, taxes right now are on sale. <laughs> you know, it's funny, and you're probably saying that a lot of people are going, what is this guy talking about, right? But yeah. it's true. It's very true. Um, you look historically, tax rates are pretty pretty favorable right now. And, uh, you know, there's some there's some obviously lots of different uh, proposals and, and, and other opinions out there of what uh, what things could look like in the future. And I think most people out there that I'm talking with, again, just just my uh, 
my input here from meeting with lots of different people throughout the years is, you know, taxes are probably going to go up, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at the way that the government is spending money and the way that the budgets are looking like, I mean, it just, it just is more and more things are pointing towards taxes going up in the future. Pretty much it has to. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, to some extent, it just has to. And one of the things I look at is most of the people, when they come in and meet with us, they're like, well, why do I need an advisor? I could buy a stock, right? I mean, well, and I could buy a mutual fund or whatever it is. And a lot of it is when you look at the overall impact of planning, I think a lot of people don't look at, you know, yes, investments are very important. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities, um, they could all be very, very important. But also, how are we investing that? And then the other impact comes, what is the future tax rate going to look like with our investments, right? And so I think that's a lot of what people don't cover is how are taxes going to be impacted throughout your retirement? And currently, with tax rates maybe being at a historical low, as well as maybe being at a very, very big discount compared to what they could be in one year, two years, or 10 years, right? So I think it's important, like you were saying, Ron, to to understand and identify where you're at on your tax picture, and could you be doing anything now while taxes might be historically low to better ourselves next, you know, in the next five or ten years, or maybe even when transferring over wealth to the next generation? Is there different different ways to position yourself to be more tax efficient? The next thing I wanted to mention here is something that speaks to that whole thing of uh, taking a comprehensive approach to your financial planning, and because you take everything into consideration. But you know, the hardest part of investing is managing your own behavior. And I'm, I'm sure you've found that to be true with, with, with your clients and people who may not have become clients but may have come in to talk to you. Yeah, it is. that's a very good way to put it, Ron. I think the most important decisions out there you have to make, right? I always say there's financial ones and then there's you know emotional ones. And I think uh, the, uh, the unfortunate part about it is, is in, investing a lot of the times is very easy <laughs> in a lot of cases except for that one darn thing, right? And that is emotion and behavior. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the biggest impacts to make a plan go, to go south real quick. Because you'll see some, some people out there, uh, I'll talk to clients, but they're like, well, why would you need an advisor? Or why would you need to really do any planning? You just put your money in the market over time, it should do really well, right? I mean, what's the big deal? Market goes up or down. And the, and the problem is it's very easy for a lot of people to say, but unfortunately, there's a big, big portion of people out there that just are not comfortable with that. A lot of them, they know that they probably should hold on to the investments, but guess what? As soon as they go down, they think the world is ending and they sell their investments, right? So yeah. I think the biggest thing is, there's my, one of my favorite sayings out there is it's not timing the market, it's time in the market, but it's also trying to find a plan that fits you. Because I think the most important thing is to find a plan that is customized to your risk tolerance, customized to your comfortability, and tailored towards your behaviors, right? I think it's super important to make sure that we're taking into account, hey, if we invested the money this way and the and your market or the account went down X amount, what would be your behavior? You know, and a lot of clients would say, oh, well, if it went down 10%, I wouldn't really worry too much, right? But then I'll turn it into dollar amounts. Well, what if your account went down a hundred grand? Yeah. And they'll go, oh, well, I couldn't really take that, right? Well, it's like, <laughs> well, you have a million dollars. And so if it went down 10%, that would be around that number, right? Yep. And and so it's very interesting to have those conversations. And I think a lot of what we do is in our discovery meeting, Ron, is yes, we want to know, you know, what assets do you have? Do you have a living trust? Do you work with a good tax person? What are your goals long-term? But also, let's talk a little bit about your past behavior. Let's talk a little bit about your emotion to money and, and, and investing. What has that been like? Because I think that is super important to find a customized approach to fit that, that, uh, that behavior and that emotion. While we're talking about emotions here, I know that you deal with folks lots of times in emotional situations. Maybe there's been the death of a spouse or a divorce or whatever. Never a good time to make important financial decisions when you are emotionally upset. Uh, you're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial, 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a discovery meeting. More on that coming up in just a few moments here. Uh, another truth bomb here, and and it is absolutely the truth. If I broke my foot, I would not want to go to a cardiologist to have that <laughs> fixed. You know, we all have no. our <laughs> strengths and, witness, and, and weaknesses and uh, uh, levels of expertise. Uh, just because you're an expert in one area, that does not automatically make you an expert in dealing with money. There are a lot of smart people out there all over California who are not smart when it comes to their finances. 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think we all have our own areas of specialties, right? I mean, I, I think that's so, that's so important. And like I was saying, I, I do think I am an, an expert when it comes to investing and retirement planning and, and positioning a proper plan. But there's a lot of things in this world I'm not an expert at, Ron, right? I don't, yeah. I don't perform heart surgery. I don't give medical advice. I don't, uh, you know, I don't pretend to, to be a contractor and build a house for somebody. There's a lot of things I don't specialize in. And I think that's super important as part of your identifying what pieces you have around you, right? I think building the proper team for your retirement plan is very important. I think when you look at, um, you know, your legal end, I always tell people I can give you a lot of different scene in the legal realm as far as estate planning and getting things organized. But when it comes time to draft papers and do a will or a trust, you want to use a professional attorney that does that, right? Um, same with taxes. All those, all that stuff is very important. And when it comes time for investments, you want to make sure you're working with a professional that is a, a professional in that um, specialty that you're looking at, right? I think that's so important. And so I always tell people, just because your sister-in-law or brother or, or neighbor is really good with spreadsheets, that doesn't mean that she can give you the right money advice, right? Yeah. Maybe they're good at budgeting, but that doesn't mean she understands investments. You know, I even have clients that are CPAs, right? A lot of our clients that are clients of ours are, uh, you know, accountants or CPAs or maybe even attorneys. And that's because they specialize and are very, very good in their industry, but they might not be the best at putting together the best investment advice, right? Or the best investment plan. And so I think it's super important when you're looking at what area you're transitioning to, maybe it's approaching retirement or in retirement, making sure you have an advisor and a team around you in each of those areas you're going to need that is there to help guide you and give you the best advice possible for your situation in that area. We're talking about truth bombs on today's edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And you probably have more risk in your portfolio than you realize. I don't like to make blanket statements, but there are so many people who have no idea how much risk they have in their portfolio. And when you talk with them and you unveil that, mm -hmm. they are absolutely stunned. Am I right? Yeah. No, you're right on that. I mean, it's very, very common. And like I said earlier, risk is not a bad thing. I don't, I, a lot of people will be like, oh, well, you should never have any risk in your portfolio. And I, I don't feel that way. I think everybody is so unique and it's really different to each individual. But like you were alluding to there, Ron, is that most of the time clients go, man, I just couldn't imagine if my account went down you know, 15%. Uh, and I'll show them. Well, okay, well, based off of your holdings, here's your here's your risk report on what your you know your uh, your portfolio allocations could look like during different market scenarios. And it shows it going down. If we had like an 08 type of scenario, it shows, hey, it could have went down, you know, 20 or 30 percent. And they're like, well, wait a minute, that's way more than I'd be comfortable with. I don't know if I'd be able to retire. Would it ever recuperate? Right? All those things kind of start flowing through their head. And I think it's very, very important to understand what type of risk tolerance you are and what type of risk tolerance you currently are invested in, right? I think that's very important to understand where you've been and where you want to be are, are two of the most important things when it comes to retirement planning. And so just understanding what your risk is going to look like in retirement, what your, what your potential returns could look like, that'll help you adjust, you know, what type of income you might be able to draw, as well as, you know, if the market was down severely, how would it impact your retirement? Those are all very important, you know, parts to the, to the puzzle there. And I think, like we were talking about, Ron, here, a lot of these true bombs are things that we have to go over with a lot of people that are calling in, coming in for these discovery meetings. And, and really, I think it's something that's so important when you're getting ready to retire or in retirement to making sure that you have the right team around you. I want to go back to that point where you're talking about, because I think that's one of the things that we always kind of pride ourselves on is by having a good team behind us. We work with a lot of different uh, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, CPAs, you know, a lot of different areas where, uh, and Medicare experts, where a lot of our clients are transitioning into retirement. And if they don't have a team around them, we do have access to a lot of these different professionals that specialize in each of those different areas to make sure that you have the right team to put around you. Because if you're talking about legal, you know, legal advice, you want to make sure you're talking to a qualified attorney. If it's tax advice, you want to make sure you're talking to a qualified accountant. And so I think it's important to make sure you know, the investment end, the legal end, and the tax end are well-rounded as transitioning into retirement. So that's part of what our uh, we call it our value statement here that we help provide. And it's one of those things, when you come in for the discovery meeting, we will go through your whole process and understanding what it is you're trying to do, where it is where it is you're at in your life, and also if we're the right, you know, we're the right team to help get you on track to the next phase and to help guide you into retirement. 
Got so many things to think about when it comes to retirement planning. And if you're nearing retirement, it is all the more important to give Logan Sadler's office a call. The number to call is 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-7526. I hope you've written down that number already or put it into your phone. Uh, best thing to do is go ahead and call it right now. Then you don't have to rely on your memory. 888 823 plan. That number is for Gary Financial, two convenient offices in Redlands and also Hemet, wherever you are in Southern California or anywhere in the world, really. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to get in touch with Gary Financial. Now, Logan Sadler is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer. You hear him on this show every single week, and it is so important to have a plan. Logan Sadler can help you put one together that will help you get to and through retirement in a very efficient way. That includes being tax efficient as well. 888-823-PLAN. I'm Ron Stutz. He's Logan Sadler. We'll have more coming up in just a moment on Logan's show, The Financial Beat. As a small business owner, you have unique responsibilities and concerns when it comes to your finances. You might be solely responsible for managing your retirement savings while also running a business. Or it might seem daunting to separate yourself from a business that you built when it comes time to retire. Logan Sadler and the team at Regary Financial have assembled a guide that can help. This guide details the most common retirement mistakes that small business owners make and how to avoid them. To get this resource, text the word ADVICE to 21000. Learn how to leave behind a thriving business while also achieving your retirement goals. Text the word ADVICE to 21000. That's the word ADVICE to 21000. You're listening to The Financial Beat, the show that makes sure your financial plan has the perfect pitch. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. Regary Financial 888-823-PLAN is a very important phone number. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number. You can arrange to have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. And Logan, of course, and all the folks at Regary have just an outstanding team there, but they also have terrific partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and even Medicare specialists to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. You can get a discovery meeting that won't cost you a penny and won't have any strings attached. The number to call to make that happen is 888 888-823- Three plan. That's eight 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 two three plan. Again, no charge for that. Simply a service that Logan Sadler offers to our listeners and our folks who check out the podcast and also those YouTube videos that are out there. Hey, you know we always try and point out these uh, these crimes that are on the federal books. And some of these things are just ridiculous. And I wonder how they got to be crimes in the first place. But it would be impossible <laughs> to count all of them. And we're just looking out for our listeners. We want to make sure you don't run afoul of the law. And this doesn't have anything to do with chickens. But did you know, you know it's a federal crime to sleep at the National Zoo? Huh. That's, I mean, hey, I mean, I wouldn't have known that, but I, mean, I guess that makes sense. What would that be? <laughs> that is crazy, right? So, is, is it, uh, now, does that mean when it's closed or just in general? <laughs> I, I guess in general. You know, in the middle of the, middle of the day, if you fall asleep, you're committing a crime. Which, man, don't nap, right? I mean, that's that's dangerous. They kind of, get a, get arrested, not even know it. <laughs> kind, of, kind of silly stuff, man. I, I guess somebody did it at some point, and uh, it caused a problem for some reason or another, and they want to make sure it doesn't happen again. I don't know, but yeah, that's a that's an interesting one. I feel like more more often than not, they're pretty out there. Yeah, that one seems like something can definitely happen if someone's just walking around and happens to take a nap at a zoo. There, I mean, yeah. that, could, that could be a. Uh, a federal crime you might not might not have even known you committed. And some people listening to this show might have done that. I, I bet there's somebody asleep at a zoo right now, you know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> at a zoo near you, right? <laughs> exactly. Hey, let's go to the mailbag here. We have some great questions. First one is from Tony in San Jacinto. And Tony says, I ended up uh, owing quite a bit in taxes for last year. I started doing some consulting on the side, and I got hit with what they're calling self-employment tax. Is it worth doing this work on the side if it's just going to make me pay more in taxes? <laughs> yeah, no, great question, Tony. And uh, you're not alone out there, right? I think a lot of us got our taxes done this year. Uh, might not have been as happy as we normally are, right? But uh, <laughs> some of us might have been the same. But yeah, that's a great question. I always tell people one thing to, to realize about taxes is that means you're making money, right? And I hate that. I typically hate that saying, but it is true. In your case, if you still are making money and it's something you enjoy doing, 
uh, you know, why not continue to do it, right? I mean, if it's one of those things, again, if it's you're in a situation where you don't need the money, but you enjoy doing it, then yeah, I mean, obviously continue to do it. You're going to be owing a little bit more in taxes because you're probably making a little bit more money. And that's just important to understand your tax structure. And I think uh, either talking with your CPA or giving us a call, we can kind of walk through what types of income you have coming in. Maybe you can lower in other areas, maybe investment income or, or whatever situations it is. But just being more aware of what types of income are coming in might be a good good way to look at it. But also, you know, like I have a lot of clients that do work in retirement and, you know, having a little extra income here or there is good. But yeah, you might have some extra taxes and things like that you have to pay on it. But as long as you're still making money in the end and it's something that's still benefiting you from a financial end, but also it's something you enjoy doing, I, I would say keep doing it as long as you want to. Tony, you might want to follow this up with a with a sit down conversation with Logan Sadler about all this. And again, that number for Regary Financial is eight 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 two three plan. Next question here is from April in Highland, and April says, "My daughter and son in law are having a tough time finding a house in their price range now that interest rates have gone up." Boy, they've yeah. got a lot of company there. They do. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little tempted to just cash out some investments, pay cash for a house for them, and then let them make mortgage payments to me. Uh, do you think this would be a bad idea? Um, no, a great, great question. I actually just had this conversation, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, with a, a client of ours. And um, yeah, it's one of those things where there's a lot more to unpack here, right? I think um, that's normally my answer, I know, but that that's a really you know, a very vague, or it's a good, it's a big question to ask and answer very vague. And I think one of the things I would look at and some of the questions I would ask you, and I'll ask you right here is basically, you know, what does your overall situation look like? Is that something by cashing out uh, your investments? What did the tax structure look like? Can you afford to uh, make that make that adjustment to the portfolio tax wise, but also income wise and asset wise? How does that make things look? The other is we've always heard you don't miss uh, you know business and family, right? That's the other atmosphere to look at. And I always tell people I hate saying that because it makes me think I'm judging your family when I don't even know them, right? You know your daughter better than I do. Um, but I think it's one of those things where if something happened and they couldn't make the mortgage payment, you know, how would that maybe affect the relationship or how, how would that hurt your overall financial situation? Um, but I have had clients that have done stuff like this. And I think it's very, it's very awesome to be able to do that for your kids, especially if it's a good situation for them and for you. I think it's kind of a win-win. But unfortunately, sometimes there's a little bit more to unpack there and look a little bit deeper into the situation than just a yes or a no in a lot of cases. Okay. Uh, good question, April. Thank you so much for, for uh, getting Great in question. touch. And uh, also, you might want to uh, have a, a longer conversation with Logan about all this and get more specifics, you know, more dollar amounts and all that kind of thing to, to help you make that decision. Last question today is from Wayne in Fontana. And Wayne says, Logan, we have two kids. One will be graduating high school this year. The other is one year behind. We've done a pretty good job of saving money for college, but we're definitely not going to have enough to cover every penny. I could sell some mutual funds to help pay for it. We could have our kids take out loans to cover what we can't, or we could take out some loans ourselves. How do you advise people in this area? Yeah, that's a that's another man. These are these are three again great questions here. All of them a little bit different, but have some uh, deeper answers, which is great. Yeah. Um, I think you know, awesome, awesome. I always tell people it's it is a great opportunity to be able to help your kids out if you're able to 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 do the things that you want them to do that benefit them. Right. Like in this case, you know, education is awesome. Um, now, good job for saving some money, but you're not alone, right? A lot of people have saved money, but it's not necessarily enough to cover the cost of college or expenses nowadays, because as we know, those have gone up quite a bit. Um, but I think well, there's a few different ways to look at it. You know, selling the mutual funds is obviously an option, but but we want to look at tax structure. As always, we want to look at the impact, right? I mean, is it one of those things? Can you really afford in your situation to sell those funds off? How would that affect your upcoming retirement, current retirement, or or overall financial situation? I think that's always the first thing you got to look at is how does it affect you. Um, and then there's also some you know pros and cons to the other things. I personally wouldn't recommend you taking out a loan yourself. Um, I would look at what investments you have and things like that, like you were saying, and seeing if that is an option. But I have had some clients where they'll pay a lot of the college for, for their child, but they might make them take out a small loan to where they make them say, you know, quote unquote, they have skin in the game type of thing, right? Where sometimes they'll have some of the kids take out a small loan in their name to help supplement to pay for it. 
But I think each of those you're looking at here are some good ideas, but I would really look at what is the what is the impact on you guys if you did sell those mutual funds? Does it does it affect your retirement? Does it affect your your financial situation as well as, you know, if what's the tax structure would look like all that, but also, you know, as far as what you're uh, what you're willing to pay, what would the payments be? I think we can crunch a lot of those numbers and kind of figure out the best solution. Because again, I have these conversations a lot with clients because it's a lot of the uh, a lot of the conversations nowadays are around retirement and college planning. So definitely not something I'm not a stranger to. But I would a I would want to ask you a few more deeper questions to identify it. But I think I gave you some good things to kind of start brainstorming on. Oh, absolutely. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler. And again, we call it a discovery meeting. It is not going to cost you one single penny. and It's not going to obligate you to do anything beyond that conversation. 888-823-PLAN. Uh, those who have taken advantage of the opportunity say they have gotten a lot of wisdom just from that opening conversation. And whether you'd like to follow it up from there with another conversation, totally up to you. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. A discovery meeting is kind of a getting to know you session. And I, I think you will really enjoy getting to know Logan Sadler. He will get to know you. And that way he can give you more specific answers to your questions and be in a position to help you a lot more. But it's up to you to reach out to make this phone call. 888-823-PLAN. This is the Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz. Hey, Logan, it's been fun getting together with you today. We had a lot of good discussions about a lot of different topics. Yeah, I appreciate uh, your time, Ron. I always have a good time on the show with you here, going over some of our favorite topics and also having a laugh here or there. And I uh, appreciate everybody listening along that's been following the podcast and radio show and all the YouTube videos and all that. As I always say, each week we really appreciate the support and hopefully, hopefully we're giving you guys some good value and some things to think on in pertaining to your situation with retirement and uh, retirement education. So I look forward to being back here next week. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and uh, give us a call if you're approaching retirement or getting close to retirement and are looking for a financial advisor to maybe help fill some of the cracks in your current financial plan to get you to and through retirement. And we're going to see you back here again next week with another show. And one more time, let me put that phone number out there, 888-823-PLAN. Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Have a great week. Regary Financial and Insurance Services, Inc. and BD Financial Group, Inc. are separate and independent entities. The information provided in this presentation is presented for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, investment, tax, or legal advice, nor does it constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities.